we had a lot of fun. And we did a variety of different types of, pro of uh, projects. So this was at the very beginning of the semester where we did another one of my portable outdoor labs. Again, we built a laboratory in a, a tent trailer on campus as part of an arts festival. I'm really interested in applying camping and outdoorsmen and explorer metaphors to understanding biotechnology as a, a more accessible um, and as a space where human beings engage with other species. Uh, this is my boss, a very open-minded woman. Um, we taught a variety of techniques in the class. This is the day that we were doing hydroponics. Um, so the students are learning a variety of techniques, but also then sort of maybe more artful interjections um, into the techniques. So this is the day we did hydroponics. Um, here, these are the results of our plant tissue culture projects. So what we did is we took samples from a plant and uh, we cloned them essentially. So you can take a very small cell sample from a plant, grow it, and it becomes sort of this uh, a mass, like a tumor of identical cells. Those cells can then be chopped up and put back into multiple dishes, and then they will grow genetically identical um, plant. So we did that one day. This is the genetic modification of bacteria to phosphoresce. So this is the GFP that I was telling you about earlier with ALBA, but on a much simpler organism. And so here what we did is we um, did a protocol where we broke the cellular walls of the bacteria and inserted um, the GFP gene. And then um, we warmed them back up and uh, encouraged them to grow. And you can see in that little dish there that everything that's growing green has been genetically modified. I want to be really, really clear with you that I have all of the appropriate health and safety approvals. And this is well monitored. So like this, for example, is a high school grade lab. This is not dangerous. Um, so I want you to be, you know, sometimes people get a little uncomfortable. Um, this is one of the, we would create, we did an open house event, and we created these sort of like unique viewing vessels for all of the different projects. We had uh, Paul Benus come up from the University of Buffalo, and we did a gel electrophoresis project. Gel electrophoresis is that banding um, technology where you can see multiple bands in like CSI, and they hold up the, the two ways to match. Um, and he showed us how that technology is really manipulatable. If you select your enzymes carefully, you can really control what types of images come up in those banding patterns. And he has his come up as a copyright signal, as a skull and crossbones, and as an ID number. This is Adam Zaretsky, also an American artist, and he's at RPI. Uh, and we did a mutagenic DNA extraction lab with him when we made a Vanitas a variety of items that carry DNA within them, and then we mash them together and extract the DNA. And these are some of my students' work. So this is a, a student who did taxidermy. Her grandfather is a taxidermist, and so they did bird taxidermy together. This is a student who is a genetically identical twin, and she and her uh, sister convinced a scientist to perform a cloning DNA protocol at the same time in their lab as they did their um, cloning dance. A little cheesy, but I was very impressed with them for going over to Maine campus and introducing themselves as the scientists. <laughs> this is one of the strongest projects from that first class, and she's actually now my research assistant is Tokyo Webster, and she's done printing, printmaking with bacteria. So she made um, lino cuts, and she impressed them into a bed of growing bacteria, and then impressed those lino cuts into clean dishes of agar, and within 24 hours, her image will have grown alive with the dish. Does it, does it die after that? What happens to it? Well, it smells, yes. and eventually the image will break. It'll fill up the whole dish. And then what we do is we put it in the biological hazardous waste, and it's incinerated. Oh, okay. Um, but one of the things that her and I are working on right now is we'd like to find a way to preserve those in the middle state. state. So we've been practicing pouring different types of polymers into them to see if we can like, solidify them. The last thing I want to talk to you about today is my camping project. I'm taking 20 artists and scientists and uh, students to Banff National Park for a project called BioArt Campus. <coughs> and here I'm interested in a more extensive way using the background of the Canadian Rocky Mountains um, as, a, as an ecological vision of the biotech future. Again, understanding ourselves more as manipulating other life forms and manipulating ourselves and our ecology when we're in the lab 
rather than seeing lab work as a very top-down, separate science from the rest of the world that we live in. Um, I've done a couple of uh, practice pieces called Celebrate, where I take a, a group out and we, um, we take um, lab specimens hiking, and we've made little appropriate carriers for them that are transparent so that they can see the view when we're hiking through the mountains. And then when we reach our destination, we determine as individuals whether or not we will give each of our specimens a breath of fresh air. Um, so these specimens have been grown in laboratory environments and have no immune system and have not been exposed to outdoor environments. So on the one hand, it's exciting for them to get out and get a breath of fresh air. But on the other hand, the bacteria that is in the air will kill the specimen because they are very fragile. Nothing is left behind in the park. Um, so it was with these sort of background experiments that I'm working towards building a, a tent city, um, which would, requires an enormous amount of human and animal research ethics, pro ethics protocols, health and safety, biosafety, and environmental assessments that I've been working on for over two years now. This project is in collaboration with the Banff Center for the Arts, and we're also working with the Biogeoscience Research Institute in the United country. And here I have, these are some of my headline artists that are coming um, from around the world. Um, each artist will be engaging an individual biological art project live in the outdoor laboratory. There will be an open house stage towards the end of the camp where um, the general public will be able to visit the camp and see our lab work. And then we're doing a conference event at the Bath Center on the following day. And these are our songs. That's my presentation for today. It's open for questions yeah. or comments or reactions. Talking about uh, taking the uh, agar bacteria and burning what's the what's the ecological footprint of this? This is very good question, and one of the things that my field is very interested in right now, um, because my work particularly engages very heavily in the biological sciences, um, there's an obscene ecological footprint. And one of my sub-projects that I didn't present today is that I'm documenting that, because um, I'm really careful to reduce, reuse, and recycle in my lab, but I've worked in a variety of other labs, and the physical mass of garbage that leaves those labs every day is just astounding. And the reason for that is that we want pure sterility. We want absolutely not even a single piece of bacteria. And you need to know you're covered in billet, like your body is almost half bacteria at its end, right? So every time an action is made in the lab, it's done with a sterile or, um, item, and those sterile items are now disposable. And the reason for that is it's easier to guarantee their sterility than if we use reusable um, components. But what it does mean is that it just hundreds and hundreds of bags of garbage um, are produced in um, a semester in a functional university grade lab. So one of the things that I do as a bioartist is I really reuse things in multiple times because my projects are not research grade or medical grade. Like I'm not inserting these items back into a human body. If my project becomes contaminated, nobody dies. So I will often reuse my sterile components over and over again. But that what I would like to say is that one of the artists invited on this trip, her name was Tanya Duff, her project is specifically engaging in that, and she is trying to make ecologically sound um, lab equipment. And one of her projects that she's bringing on the trip is a biodegradable incubator. And so she's been working with an engineering team, and what they are doing is they're using pure biodegradable materials in order to build a functional scientific grade incubator. Now, it's sort of a useless device because you really want an incubator to last, you know, 10, 20 years. And her incubator will probably um, crap out after a month. But um, it's a really good object lesson towards looking at, like, recycling and where the materials come from in the first place. So it's something that we're very interested in, and it's something that is a problem. Two questions. Uh, the first one, I know you have scientists on board with that, but how does it has the scientific community reacted to this at first, at least with something of the history of that? It depends. Um, if there's ever been an artist involved in a scientific group before, then they're usually very open-minded. So for example, at Symbiotica, when I worked there in Australia, they've had artists there for over 30 years. That there was never any...